Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester three scaling networks, and this is chapter six, multi-area OSPF. And this is section 6.2, configuring multi-area OSPF. Now, upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure multi-area OSPF version two in a routed network, configure multi-area route summarization in a routed network, and verify multi-area OSPF version 2 operations. Implementing multi-area OSPF. Implementation plans and steps. First step is to gather the network requirements and parameters. Second step is to define the OSPF parameters. Three, third step, configure OSPF and then we verify OSPF. Remember from the Cisco guidelines that were telling us that uh, one router should not be in more than three areas and one area should have less than 50 routers and one router should ha should not have more than 60 neighbors so we're thinking these are the network requirements and then the parameters that we are gathering for example have a look at this this is the topology that we are gonna configure so if you can pause the video write the uh, write the topology on the piece of paper for example to configure OSPF multi-area first we go to the uh, router one in the global configuration mode we say router, OSPF, then 10. That becomes process 10. This number, process 10, does not have to match to other neighbors. So the other neighbors can have other process. We usually keep it the same one, but it doesn't have to match. Different to EIGRP where this has to match. Then in OSPF, it's very important that we define router ID. Without router ID, we cannot implement OSPF. So router ID, this is a the most preferred method to configure router ID by actually explicitly saying what is router ID. So in this case, we're saying router hyphen ID 1.1.1.1. If we didn't do this, the second step will get to find the highest loopback address and it will use that as a loop router ID. Or if there's no loopback configured, then it will pick the highest physical IP address and then pick that as a router ID. If you don't have a physical address configured, then OSPF will not be enabled. You cannot enable that process. Then we advertise the network. So for example, network 10.1.1.1 here, and with a 4.0. This is a wildcard mask that says match this IP address. So this interface. We could say, for example, uh, match, um, if, I, if I stop here and, and just open the notepad. And uh, here, notepad. Okay, we can say, for example, um, I say network uh, 10.0.0.0, match the first octet and ignore the last three octets, and then area uh, area zero. That means that any network, any interface that starts with uh, 10 is gonna be part of the OSPF. But that's not the recommendation from Cisco. Cisco is recommending that you define specifically what interfaces we want to enable for OSPF, like this. Give an IP address, four zeros, which means match all the four octets, and this is going to be in area one. Then we say network 10121, which is this interface here. Four zeros again, match specifically this interface, and that's going to be in our area one as well. And then network 192.168.10.1, which is this IP uh, network interface on this network, and then that's going to be in our area zero. So router two, for example, let's see the router two is as well. Again, same process 10, router ID, network. Here we are not enabling like specific interface. We're saying, okay, 192.168.10.0. Any interface that starts with this network, 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.7, that's, that's gonna match this interface here, and that's gonna match this interface here. Network 10.1.2.1.0, network 10.2.1.0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0255 area zero. So this network is in area zero. And then right away, as soon as we do that, we're gonna have a adjacency with router one. Router three, OSPF 10, router ID, 192.168.10.6. So this uh, this network here, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.3, area zero, that will be okay. I mean, even though it's, it's 10.4, but since you say six falls in that range, that's gonna be okay. And then network 10. Dot, uh, sorry, network 192.168.1.1, which is this 
and this is the most preferred method, area 2. Network 192.168.2.1, and then this is the network. Four zeros as a wildcard mask, area 2. And then right away, the router 3 will have a neighbor relationship with the router 2. Configuring multi area OSPF version 3, you will say IPv6, router OSPF 10, you enable OSPF there, you give a router ID. That's it. There's no network command here or anything. You just go exit, and then you have to go per interface rather than like that with the network command. So this is the, the good method. You go to the gigabit ethernet interface and you say IPv6, OSPF 10, process 10, area 1. And then you go to the other interface and you say IPv6, OSPF process, so you link it to that process, and you tell what area is going to be that uh, link. Configuring OSPF root summarization. Now, OSPF root summarization, why do we need to summarize? We do summarize it because we want to keep our tables small. So it involves consolidating multiple routes into a single advertisement, which can be then propagated into the backbone area. Remember, the only place you can summarize in OSPF was at area border router or ASBR, Autonomous System Boundary Router. Normally, type 1 and type 2 LSAs are generated inside each area these are translated in type 3 LSAs and sent to other areas. If area 1 has 30 networks to advertise, then 30 type 3 LSAs would be forwarded into the backbone area. So, for that reason, we want to summarize. With the root summarization, the area border router consolidates the 30 networks into one or few advertisements. So, this does occur on area border router and is applied to routes from within each area. Specific to external routes that are ejected into OSPF via root redistribution, ASBR summarizes external routes. Summarizing inter area routes on area border router. So, for example, what we do, we have we run show IP root OSPF, and we can see that router one is, is advertising both networks, and router three sees them as, as inter area uh, networks. What we want to do, we want to summarize these routes into one single route advertised from router 1. So to calculate the summary route, you list all the networks in the binary format, like so, and then count the number of far left matching bits to determine the mask of the summary uh, route. So for example, we look at how many bits are exactly the same for networks that we do want to summarize. So as we can see here, our 22 bits are the same, and the different bits are the rest. So first 22 bits, they do match. So that's going to be our summary address. And then copy the matching bits and then add zeros bits to determine the summary network address. So that will be, for example, if we put these back into the decimal, that will give us 10.1.0.0 and the uh, subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And then to summarize it, we need to go to the OSPF process and say that this is inter-area summarization. So we go to the OSPF process 10 and say area 1 range 10.1.0.0.255.255.252.0 and router 1 will create a null zero interface. If you remember, this null zero was like a, a loop prevention mechanism. And it's, it means the bucket, if it matches the summary route, it will send it to the bucket. And router 3 will see that it says only a summary route. It doesn't see any more specific routes. The verify multi-area OSPF, we use the commands like show IP OSPF neighbor, show IP OSPF, or show IP OSPF interface to see more inf uh, pro uh, information about the single interfaces. Commands specific to multi-area information include show IP protocols, show IP OSPF interface brief, show IP root OSPF and show IP OSPF database. If we want to use for OSPF version 3, we substitute IP with IPv6. For example, we say show IP protocols. We can see the protocol OSPF uh, process 10. You can see our router ID. We can see that it is an area border router. So router 1 is our ABO. And it's routing for networks. They can see there 10.1.1.1 and 10.2.1 and 192.168.10.1. Routing information where it's getting, like uh, uh, other neighbors, 3.3.3, is getting the information from other sources like 3.3.3.3 and 2.2.2, administrative distance of 110. Show IP OSPF interface brief. This is great 
to see what interfaces you have enabled for OSPF and what areas they are enabled on. So we can see that uh, process ID for these interfaces is all process 10 and serial 000 is enabled for area 0, G01 and G00 are enabled for area 1. These are you can see the IP address and the mask of that interface and the cost how much is to get to that link so 64 on the serial and 1 for the fast ethernet or sorry for gigabit ethernet. This network type is point to point. This is the DR, so multi access network. Neighbors, we got one neighbor on the serial. To verify OSPF routes, show IP route and then OSPF. Begin gateway, just missing the codes. We don't want to see the codes here. So we can see we have learning two uh, inter, no, intra area uh, networks. For example, 10.2.1.0, so 10.2.1.0 is the this network here of root 2 192.168.10.4, which is this network here, we are learning. And we are learning from another area, two networks, 192.168.1.0 and 192.168.2.0, which is these two networks here. Verifying the multi-area OSPF link state database, we can see the router 1, because it's area border router, has got two databases is holding two synchronized two databases one for area zero and one for area one so for example here that this information here all up here is for area zero so all here is area zero we can see router link states these are lsa type one so we can see our, our links and lsa type three summary net links we can see it here same information for our area one Verifying multi-area OSPF version 3, show IPv6 protocols, and we can see that we are running OSPF process 10. Number, er, number, number of areas, we have two normal areas, no stop, no NSSA. Router ID, and again here we're saying that AR area border router. Show IPv6 root OSPF, we can see that we have one intra-area route learn and one inter-area route as well similar information if you say show ipv6 ospf database thank you very much for watching please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been astrid krasnichi bye bye